Hey Red Bear fans, today I'm going to show you how you can get your image centered perfectly on a square coaster such as this one by creating a jig just like this utilizing your X-Tool D1. So for these types of projects what I like to use is just the cheap Luan plywood. This right here is about 2 by 4 foot and it ran me about 10 bucks at my local hardware store. They also do come in various sizes as well, so if you just need a 2x2 two two piece, you can get those as well. This one right here is about 6 bucks or so. Right now, all I'm going to do is just shave it down a little bit just to make sure that it fits in my laser bed a little better. Now that you have your board cut, you want to make sure that it lays flat in your spoil area here. And then you want to go ahead and trace out your legs right on top of the board to ensure that everything lines up straight. Now that you got your legs traced out, what you're going to use is a one inch drill bit to go ahead and drill your holes. Pro tip is to use a spoiler board behind your jig, that way you're not splitting the wood on the back end as well. Once you get your holes drilled, go ahead and take some sandpaper and just smooth out any rough edges you may have. Also, try to get on the inside a little bit here as well, just to ensure a smooth fit. Now your install and jig setup may be a little different than mine. I don't utilize any of the feet that a lot of people use out there. My legs are actually directly installed right into my spoil board. That way I have no movement whatsoever and it makes making jigs a lot easier. So for this first step, you are going to have to have your honeycombs installed so you can rest your jig on top of it to actually cut the spaces out. So your jig should sit on top of everything just like this for right now. Once the honeycombs are out, obviously this is going to drop down and just be flat on the surface. Okay, so you can see here, I have my old jig set up, and each one of these squares is, if you look over on the right-hand side here, is four inches by four inches. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna copy, and I'm gonna create a new template here. 24 is fine, I actually made this 44 inches tall. Um, doesn't really matter too much right now because it's going to depend on what you do once you get it into light burn itself. So go ahead and create that and then we will paste these into here. All right, so I do have a little bit of extra room. So what I am going to do and on these here, you're going to want to make sure that you're using your X and Y axis a lot. Um, so that just helps you line everything up. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and set everything to 12 and 12. All right, so we can go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. Let me go ahead and turn my rulers on. All right. So again, as you can see, each of these boxes here is set up for a 4x4 for the slate coasters. So since I have all those, what I'm going to do is just copy, and I'm going to paste that in front, which is Control F. And then if you slide these over, if you hold shift, it will make sure that it can only move directly to the left or right or up and down. It's going to make sure everything is nice and straight. So if we do move and shift these over to the side here, you can see that these ones right here are lined up directly at 6.25 on the X axis. So I want to make sure that I'm putting a quarter of an inch in between all these just to give a nice stability in the inside. So 12.5. Another thing too, and these are the very similar things for when you're using light burn. So if you go ahead and highlight and then right here over on the right hand side, if you see this little reference point, you can actually click to the left side. So that is going to show what is lined up on this left side of whatever is selected. So right now it is showing on the x-axis that it's 18.5. So if I go and select the ones to the left of that and show on the right axis, that is 18.25. So that means that that is exactly a quarter of an inch right there. But if I didn't have that um, snap to uh, turned on right now, if I did need to adjust these anywhere, so let's say they're moved over here somewhere, I can just go ahead and put in that 18.5 and, whoop, sorry here, I got it on the right axis here. So let's go ahead and put that 18.5 back in there, and there we go. So that is going to ensure that all those are lined up with a perfect quarter of an inch in between each of these squares.
So then what I'm going to do is duplicate the same thing. And that's control C, control F for paste on top. Go ahead and right there. And as you can see, my snap two guys are already showing that I have a quarter of an inch right there. So I believe I should have enough room on my extended bed uh, for the Xtool D1 to get four coasters across. Now again, as you can see, if I set this up here, this is showing with four across and four down with the quarter of an inch in between, I'm at 16.75, which is pretty much pushing the limits of the, um, the X axis on an Xtool D1. But since I also have the extended rails on there, I'm going to be able to duplicate and make this a lot bigger. So control C, control F, and we're gonna go ahead and shoot that down. And there's my quarter of an inch. And my board inside uh, the actual jig itself was 44 inches tall. So uh, right here, this is showing total height is 33 inches. So I can still get maybe another one or two um, coaster openings right here if I need to as well. So let's go ahead and try to see if I can get two more here. So two more is going to be just too much. But what I can do is one more. So I'm going to delete those there. So not too bad. So I can get nine rows and four columns there. So what we're going to go and do is save this as an SVG file in Illustrator here. And then I'm going to bring it over into Lightburn. And we're going to take it from there uh, in cutting these out on the Xtool D1. Okay, now that we're over in Lightburn here, let's go ahead and import our file, which is the Coaster Extended template this time. And for some reason, Lightburn doesn't always want to bring it in at the exact size that it was saved at, uh, but we know that this was 16.75 inches wide. Aspect is locked there. So we're gonna go ahead and blow that up and bring it down. And then as we can see, if we zoom out, that we are gonna to have to take off that bottom row. Doesn't look like it's gonna fit entirely, which isn't a big deal. And what we are going to do is use these X and Y axis again here. So right now, turn this on. So humor me for just a moment here. If this is where we're going to line this up, let's say we're going to put this at 19.25 inches on the X axis. And let's say we're going to center this at 8.5 or so. All right. So we are going to have to maybe make some slight adjustments once we get it uh, go to actually cut this on the Xtool D1. So we're going to have to make sure that we are framing it a few times just to make sure that everything does line up because like I said before, we are pushing the boundaries of the width here on what the Xtool is capable of. But height-wise, um, or, or I guess with the Y-axis, I'm not too concerned with how much room we have there. But we do know that if we burn these exactly where they are at, and each one of these is showing exactly at 4 inches by 4 inches again, which is the size of our coasters, we know then that each one of these, that is exactly where we need to line our image up. So once uh, we burn these, we're going to go ahead and actually save this as a light burn file itself. Then what you can do is you can go over on the right hand side and turn your output off, and then you can still tell here at 2.125 and 2.25 is exactly where you need to line up your images. This is gonna make sure that all of your images are lined up on every single coaster perfectly every time. You will never have to eyeball anything. It will always be centered right there. Just to kind of show you here, let's go ahead and import uh, just a random image here. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring this in here. Uh, we're going to put that on another layer. All right, so we know that we have four inch coasters, so let's go ahead and make sure this is locked. Uh, let's say we want that at three inches wide. All right, 
So we can go ahead and instead of trying to eyeball this or eyeballing it with lining up your laser head on the bed, once your jig is installed, you know for certain that each one of these is exactly where it's going to be burning. So you drop in all of your coasters, and then you're going to go ahead and take this here, and like I said, we can make sure we can copy this, and 2.25. So we're going to go ahead, 2.25, line that up, place that in there. So this now is centered directly in this 4-inch coaster square here. So what you're going to do is anytime you're doing a mass order is you're going to do that exact same thing. Whether it's the same image, you can copy and paste it and then line it up with this one here. Or if you have uh, multiple images that you're going to be doing on different coasters, you bring those in and you can just line all those up. On that layer then what you're going to do is you're going to just going to put whatever settings you need for the coasters that you're doing. If it's wood or slate, whatever it is. And every single one will always be lined up every single time. So let's get ready to go ahead and burn this here and do a couple corrections with framing and then we'll take a look and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I did want to jump back in and just say that I did decide to cut down again and just go with three across here. Uh, just the width wise just had me a little worried. I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to fit in there. So uh, still not bad, still able to get about 24 coasters out of this one jig itself. Now that your machine is done cutting, go ahead and remove your honeycombs and reinstall your jig. It should look something like this. Now go ahead and drop in your coasters and they should fit nice and snug in there. Just like that. Okay, now that we're back in light burn here, I'm going to go ahead and show you if I highlight the whole thing here, it shows that we are uh, centered on eight and a half inches across on the x-axis and about 18.875 uh, on the y-axis going up and down here. So uh, still not bad, able to get the 24 coasters like I mentioned before. So what we are going to do is make sure that this is on output is turned off and then we're going to save this, extend it right there, as a light burn project. That way every time we open this up, this will be exactly where it needs to be. So, uh, as I was saying before, if we go ahead and import in uh, just a random uh, image here that we wanted to put, we're going to go ahead and throw that on a different layer here. And as I was saying before, we just want to make sure everything is centered here. And our width, we're going to say that these are going to be about three inches wide for the logo. Uh, so we can still click in the background here and see that this is centered at four and a quarter and four inches. So we want to go ahead and make our adjustments here and just mimic exactly what that coaster is in the background. Now we know that every coaster that we put into that jig in this top left corner here for this square, that image is going to be perfectly centered into that coaster. So if we go ahead and copy and paste and put it into the second one here, Again, this is going to be eight and a half and four. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is at eight and a half and four inches here. And now we know for sure that those two images are centered right on those coasters. And you can go ahead and do this for every single coaster that you need to do. A uh, great thing too is if you highlight both of them, if you're going to do multiples going down, you can just copy and paste those right there and just line those up going all the way across, make it a little bit quicker for yourself as well. And that is it. So once you have your jig created, make sure that you line all these up into the squares itself and make sure you, that output is turned off on the background so you're not doing anything, but that's just to help you there as a guide to make sure everything's lined up. Once everything's lined up, you can go ahead and burn it with your settings and all of your images will be perfectly centered on every single coaster every single time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed watching this video of us creating this coaster jig for your X-Tool V1, go ahead and hit like and subscribe for future videos.